Levi, back again with um, your first product video lesson. Uh, last week we kind of went over <clears throat> just some basic strumming things because we got to get that rhythm um, in sync with being able to pick, so that uh, when you start picking, you don't you know you lose your timing and everything like that. So basically, we're working on on things like this. Also talked about uh, I forgot what the strum was you use now we also talked about the basic you know bass down pause then a down up or bass down pause then up down up <clears throat> now that up down up this really could be divided in two sections and that is the bass and the down are mainly geared towards the, the you know the lower strings this little up down up is just mainly just a little bit of a maybe the the bottom two or three strings like up to the maybe to the G string maybe even to the D string <clears throat> so it doesn't have to be a big motion or anything like that it's just a quick up down up and I'm just focusing on that lower or the the higher strings and what that does is you know, allows the top strings to sustain If I hold that note out and don't not strum, you can hear that it just keeps going. Now, obviously, that's cut off when we hit the note again. Or if we uh, go back and forth. And that's another thing we talked about is, you know, varying, not doing this every time. just uh, mix it up a little bit and do something like just do a straight bass down bass down bass down until the last like the last beat like if we did count it to four one two three Upstroke before the and and uh, one. Okay, so that allows the, the music to breathe a little bit. And uh, like I said, if we have uh, the notes, now one thing we could do is instead of moving this, when we come down to that or those two notes sustain, so we don't have to worry about um, when we lift this note, it kills this note. So there's no sustain there. But if we were just to hold this and play the alternate bass note on the higher string, like the this and then the G string, then it, it would sustain a lot better like this. sustain you know spreading out across all the, the strings and it makes for a nice you know melody it makes for a nice sound same thing works with a G a D you know any of any of that stuff and I think we may have talked about um, we talked about a G run I'm pretty sure we went to with a basic G run which uh, I if you don't use this this uh, G here it's fine with this one too and you this is such a cool, um, a cool technique that you really don't have to move any of your fingers. You can just keep the chord shape and then hit that. And all that is is you're pressing down. I'm moving from the second fret of the A string down to the D string when I get ready to hit that, and then I'm hitting that second fret on the D string and then pulling off. Now that's not a straight pull up because the, the sound dies when you do that. So that's a pull and it's kind of like a, a very slight bend. You can see that string bend in there. Okay, so you can do 
do that as well. We, when we counted that, we came up with the one, two, three, four. And 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 the one. Okay. And the reason I'm kind of doing this a little longer is so that you can play along if you need to. Feel free to go back and rewind this if you need to. And there's a cool little video player that I recommend called VLC. If you're watching this on your computer, it's really easy. It's, it's uh, at www.videolan.org. Video and once you go to that side, it'll pull up uh, where you can download it. And it automatically recognizes what kind of computer you're using. So you can just click on the download button and it'll download it. And when you watch it, if you go up to the, uh, when you get to the, um, you're probably using Windows, uh, computer when you go up to the menu you can go to where it says playback and the cool thing is you can tell it it says playback speed and you can slow it down with VLC media player it's very cool so if you have any problems with these videos um, you can actually watch it on VLC media player now hold on just a second I just thought of something this is gonna be on YouTube it's not gonna be sitting directly to you because it's gonna be such a big file uh, more than likely so it, it's not going to be sitting directly to you in the form of video I apologize for that but video land video player is a really good player for that but if you go to YouTube the cool thing about that is if you'll click on the little cog down here on the right hand side the little looks like a little gear uh, a lot of the videos now they are um, allowing you to change the speed on those so some of my videos is going to be released pretty soon I've noticed that some of those videos you can click on and, and slow down the speed so that you can follow along but I try to do that naturally anyway. I try to just, you know, play something and then slowly demonstrate it anyway. So <clears throat> it's not like that's going to be a big issue. So, um, but yeah, just check it out when you get on YouTube. Look at that little wheel. Usually it'll have like, uh, if you want annotations on or off, and it'll also have the video quality, which you should be able to select 720 uh, HD. Uh, but late, lately they've been putting that uh, speed adjustment on there, the playback speed. And I'm not sure what the qualifications are as far as like what you know designates a video as qualified to be slowed down or sped up. I don't know what the, what you know the qualifications are for that. Otherwise, I'd do it for every single video. I probably need to email them about that and figure that out. But anyway, back to the lesson here. You know, we also went over that, that little. I don't know what to call that. I keep forgetting what I call it. But it gives it a little bit more attitude, a little more blues. So we're, we were adding elements together, like we just put a bass note, and maybe one of those. But once again, you don't want to repeat anything. Too much of anything sounds like just repetitive, monotonous, and it gets your ears get used to it. It almost becomes irritating to your ears. So you don't want to sit here and go. Or even. You know, you don't want to sit there and wear it out, you know, uh, unless you're about ready to hit to another chord. And then once again, you can practice the, putting that in there too. So you got a bass note, a low bass note, and then an alternate bass note, which in the G, in the case of the G chord, is a D string. If it's hard to incorporate that down up down or that up down up at the end of that strum, just work on your bass downstrokes. Focus on one thing at a time and get it where you can get pretty good where you don't have to think about it. And then you can add a Have a time. So you can work on all these different things like that. Now you can also do that with a D. I think we went over that. Which is the same thing as the G run. I think we may even went on, on C. You can do that also on the G string. For the 
most part, all these notes that you're needing are going to be within that chord shape. The cool thing about that is you don't have to move but maybe one finger and get there. Even with a D, you can just move the first finger up and then just put it right back down where you were. So that's really cool <clears throat> that you can do that. Now, um, let me try to think of something else here I just thought of. The only thing, other thing I can think of right now is I was thinking about we could just kind of move that forward just a little bit uh, while you're getting used to playing the rhythm with all these other techniques. I don't want to push it too far. I want you to get to where you can get adjusted with that. But you could also work on walk-ups and, you know, walking up and down uh, to another chord. Say we're going to go to from the G to either this C or this C. So we could just go... It's okay to have that little bit of a silence in there. I stopped my strumming it totally altogether so that I could just make sure that these notes were emphasized. And that was all downstrokes because it's passing, they're passing so slowly. Later on, if you want to get into good picking, you want to be able to get used to up and down strokes. No, but if it's if it's not going by fast, then more than likely it's just a downstroke. So what I'm thinking of is we're going along here. I'm thinking of introducing Carter style tunes because the cool thing about those are that most of the tunes you play while you are playing actual rhythm. So for example, if we did Wildwood Flower. cool thing about the Carter style rhythm is, is the way it falls on the beat, every single one of those melody notes is a downstroke. So you don't have to worry about which direction is my pick going to be. If I did this really slowly, you would see this going on. Every single note there was a downstroke. So Carter style tunes, and I'm talking about like uh, June Carter Cash and the Carter family. Uh, Johnny Cash's uh, wife, the Carter family, uh, sung and played a lot of those type of tunes where they was playing the rhythm along with their actual playing, along with this, the um, the melody. So that's the, probably the easiest way to start is uh, when you want to start getting better at picking and maybe just sitting around playing songs for yourself, is starting with the Carter style tunes. And what I'll do is I'll probably just look up a bunch of different Carter style tunes and we can go over which ones you want to learn. Um, and when we get to one-on-one, -on -one, we can kind of tr uh, track the progress and see what's going on there. So the other thing I was going to go over today, though, these are just basic things that you can do within a tune, whether it's a Carter style or anything else. If you're playing I'll Fly Away or a gospel song or bluegrass, like you said, you don't get into bluegrass, you hear a bluegrass tune, and these are just basic things that you can utilize in many uh, tunes. Another thing we was talking about, let's get back on to that, and that is the, all that is is an open A, a B, and then a C. In other words, the B note and the C note. And I'm not going to, I'm not good at naming the notes on the fretboard very well. Uh, I have to think about it most of the time. So I'm just going to tell you the fret number. So it's just going to be zero on the A, then one, or excuse me, two, three. And that leads you to that C note for the key of C. Now you can go straight to the G from there or you can walk it back down. And if I was to count that, and I'm sorry if this sounds repetitive, it, it feels repetitive a little bit to me, but um, if it, it, at least if it is, then you have this on video and you can go back and watch it over and again and kind of refresh it. I'm going to incorporate some, hopefully some new stuff here, but uh, I feel that this is very important to kind of reiterate what we may, be, may have went over. Some of this may be new, I'm not sure, but uh, it's definitely worth doing, you know, and uh, you can go back and watch it later. But, so if we counted along with this, like we did last week, we counted and then we uh, 
that way we know where to where to add the what beats to and everything. Like we go something like this: one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now and I'm going to add the and the and see if that uh, helps any. One, two, three, four, and a one. So we have we have the uh, four is the first note. One, two, three, four, and one. Four and one. Four and a one. Four and a one. Okay, so that's the that's the, every time you switch to a chord, that's what it's going to be. If it's a four four time, so we can do that to this C as well. And I'm, I'm trying to pay attention to my hand up here so that I don't. You know, drop it below where you can't see. Me. So the next thing is, is we would take since this is easy, we want to start easy first, and then after that we would take it onto the the C shape, and then from there we want our other fingers to get involved. So we want to try to get this G shape down if possible. And like I said, uh, I think I told you this. Like I said, you can don't have to worry about this bottom pinky because for the most part. What I do is I, I don't know if you see this or not, but I'm anchoring. I'm anchoring these two fingers, kind of just you know hanging on to that bottom string. And when I strum, you can't hear that string ring out. So if I'm hitting, um, you can't really hear that. In the scheme of all the other strings ringing out, you can't hear that muted string. Okay. So, the next thing is going from this C, we'll just go back from this C, or G, to this C. Let's start counting, that way we'll know where to switch. And I'm going to have to get my thing here so I can see my, where I'm at. Okay, so let's start counting. And I'll go slow. And one, two, three, four, and a one. This little shape, I'm gonna come down with my ring finger, or excuse me, my middle finger on the second fret of the A, so it's open A. And then what happens is as that open A is ringing, my hand is getting ready to switch to that C. And so this comes there, and then my ring finger comes down on the third fret of the A string so that this one and the first finger can be planted on the rest of the C chord. I do a reverse. Once again, as that open A is ringing, my hand is moving to where that I can hit that G chord in time to hit that, that low G note on the third fret of the E string there. Two, three, four, and a one. Two, three, four, and a one. Now, once you get to that point to where you can do that good, now you can work on your alternating bass notes. And then once again, if you have problems with uh, that little up, down, up thing, just, just, that's fine if you just go. You can hit the bass note every time or you can do it like every other time. sound like this if I incorporated the up down up. So on the second down bass down up down that's where the second down is coming in. Up down up down up down so I'm not hitting the up I'm just telling you as a you know reference where that's coming in. Two and so it'll be and three. One, two, and three, four, and a one, two, and three, four, and one. And that, that for me, that's kind of hard to count 
strum and find where I'm going, even though that's an easy lick. When you're trying to bunch all that stuff together, it makes it tough to find where you're going, but that's okay. We just work on one thing at a time. Okay, so the next thing is once again, from there, once you get there, you want to get this G. Now once again, you can leave the pinky out and just start straight. Try to aim for that low E string there on the third fret. But the cool thing is you can deaden it out until you actually hit it. So you can be like. You know, so by the time you get there, uh, it'll be alright because you are not really let the E ring out. But be aware that if you do that, it may already be time to switch back okay so just make up your mind on what you want to do there I do recommend practicing this G um, if you haven't you know, gotten very good at it once again I was going to mention earlier and I just now remembered that little lick you can do that on a C too okay um, now uh, one thing I was going to go over today one let's just add one new thing at a time so that you can kind of you know stay it uh, up to pace and if this does feel a little like beneath you I'm sorry I apologize I've got uh, enough students to where it's really easy to misplace who I've taught what and uh, there's another student that comes in right after you that I've kind of teaching him along the same lines so I'm hoping uh, that uh, this is you know enough of a challenge for you it will it will get to be enough of a challenge for you I'll tell you that right now uh, I'm not gonna over tax you or anything like that but you will begin to see progression as long as you practice and I do recommend you practice I mean I can teach you this all day long but if you don't apply it if you don't become familiar with how this stuff feels and get it under your fingers then it's gonna be you know you're gonna be left behind so make sure that you're practicing this stuff every month when you come in on for a personal lesson we can kind of adjust according to that based on where you're at and then move from there. Okay, so the other thing I was going to add is we know how to get from the G to C back to the, and if we're in the key of C, we know how to get down to G. Once again, you can incorporate, if you're doing just down strums, you can incorporate uh, adding bass notes here and there. even give you an actual a better guideline um, to know when to change to know when to walk that up so it would be after the second time you hit the low bass note that you would begin to change from a G to a C like this that'd be one this is the second time after another downstroke you immediately instead of going to the bass the alternate bass note you would go starting that run like second time Don't forget about that. Okay, the last thing we're going to go over today on this lesson is getting from a G to a, a D. And we probably know uh, you can do that. You can do this, uh, the opposite of the G run. You can do that on the A string, pull off. And then when you're moving, what happens is there is uh, as this happens, once again, uh, as I was changing to the, the C, my hand was moving to that position. Well, when you do the second uh, fret pull off on the A string, as it's moving, as it's ringing, your hand's moving, and this finger can be left there. It's an anchor point. I call it an anchor point because you, you just leave it in the same fret. When you're going from this G to this D, these other fingers kind of revolve around this pivot point here, this little anchor. And so as you're doing this, notice my hand was moving as that was ringing, and then got to that D, I hit that D string. Okay, 
so another thing we can do is typically I don't do that. Typically I like, you know, these. There's one, here's another one. So let's go over those three real quick and then we'll be done for this lesson. First one I did, I just went, once again, I don't have to move all my fingers around and everything to find these notes. They're right where I need them to be. They're right close to um, where my fingers already are. And I remember saying this to you last week. That is to pay special attention, especially in the key of uh, G and D, which are two of the most popular keys of all times. Not only in the key of G and D, but when you move your capo up and play in the G and D shapes, any time you use these shapes, pay attention to, in relation to where the capo is, the uh, second and the third fret. The second fret is what I consider major E sounds. And for the D. third fret sounds more bluegrassy, more blues, and has more attitude. So you have more of a bluesy sound. So let's work on this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my G, G or my middle finger off this top bass note. Okay. So I'm experiencing a weird deal on the video here. All right, Levi, I apologize for that. Um, quick time was doing something weird there. I have to make sure not to have any background tasks running or something. I don't know what caused that, but anyway, uh, for the last few minutes here, we're gonna talk about uh, working on going from G to D. And the first thing I did earlier was I just dropped this first finger, this uh, middle finger down to the A string when I get ready to go to the D. Now we talk, I think we talked about a rest stroke where we pick one note and let our pick rest on the string below it, like this. The A string's still ringing, but now my pick is resting on the D string so that I can hit that D string if I need to, like this. Notice how it rested on that D string while this hand was moving. And when that goes, as soon as you hit that up in D, you need to be moving to hit that D chord. So if we counted this, one, two, three, four, and a 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 one. Okay, the second one I did was a little bit different. It, it required more time to get there, but it was a... And I use my pinky, usually I just bring my pinky up to hit that, but you can go, you can release your chord in, in, in your hand and go. Usually I don't like doing the three fingers like that, unless it's with my pinky. But what you could do is just go hit one note, hit the next note, and then uh, apply what we just did to that. Instead of... So you could do either uh, a slide to that. But I think it sounds better if we pick each individual note. So instead of doing that, what I would recommend is you just sliding that up, but picking it instead of picking and sliding. I'm just doing that. So that the count would be like this. It's right after the three. Three, let's see, one, two, three, four. The second note should be where the, the four lands. One, two, three, four. Let's see, one, two, three, two, three, four. Okay. 
Let's try it with an and a in between everything. One and a two and a three and a one and a two and a three and a four and a. So after the three, we have an and a, a four, and then another and a back to one. One, two, three, and a four and a one. Strokes. And every time I'm kind of slightly doing a rest stroke and then leaving that last note on that D string. And if we did it the way I was telling you about, I would just scoop my whole hand up. Finally, the last one that I did is just kind of the same thing as is that instead of instead of sliding on, just hammering on from where this finger already is. And before I forget, I meant to mention this earlier too. All these ideas are just popping in my head, so I'm just going to spit them out as they're happening. Uh, I think we talked about uh, how you can just leave this finger hanging if it, you have problems going to that note immediately. Just leave it hanging because the back of this finger, the back of that middle finger there is muting the A string. It can mute, let's just say it can mute the A string uh, by just leaning that finger down leaning that finger down just a little bit. Otherwise you want it to ring out if you're pressing it down so you just kind of move your wrist forward a little bit. If you don't then my wrist tends to lift up here and then my wrist comes back just a little bit and I can be a little more relaxed with the chord. And then while you're playing this nobody can tell that that note is gone. And so that chord now has no third. It doesn't have a B in it, unless you did this. And then that, that would be, you know, let that B string ring out. But it, it seems to me without a third, it seems more like a really it's got a powerful sound to it. You basically, got two notes. You got a G, a D, a G, a D, and a G. So you don't have a B. You have, you have two notes which means it kind of compacts the chord and makes it sound better. And incidentally, a power chord only has a one and a five, which is what this has. This has a one, two, three, four, five, five. Uh, uh, the one in G is the, the, the G, is the root, and then the five is the fifth step in that major scale, one, two, three, four, five, which is a D, okay? I know that's a lot of probably, probably went over your head, I don't know, but basically to say that is, just has a nice attitude sound. And then if you want to leave this hanging, you can just do that. And then when you go on the D, but in order to do that, you do kind of lift. You need to lift so that it's not muted. So the last one I did was two, three, four, and a one. Basically, that's just a, put a hammer on, just like we did up here. So we're doing it there now. So once you get used to this, it'll be easier to go like that. And you don't, that reminds me, I almost did that, and it reminded me of this. You don't want to have that, you don't have that fast, because it'll just throw your timing off. You want it to be a nice. So it'd be like a, a two camp thing, a one and a two, one and a two, and a one and a two. Not, you don't want it to be like that, especially if you're going to D chord. I mean, that'll throw you off, you want it. You want it to be nice and time, nice and even. Maybe next week we can work on an actual G run. I don't know, but um, that's it for today's lesson. I apologize for the thing earlier, so you got a little bit of extra here on the end. 
so I'm just going to go ahead and, and splice these two together and then upload them to uh, YouTube and shoot you out the link and uh, send you some more stuff next week, man. Hope you enjoy it. Sit down and practice this stuff every day as much as you can, you know, 30 minutes a day, whatever. Try to find the time in your schedule to do this because it will, you will start seeing improvements if you put in the dime and the dedication, all right? Talk to you later, Levi. I appreciate it, and I'll talk to you next week. Have a good one. God bless.